I do want to uh, uh, try to celebrate with you additional progress that has been made in the last year and tell you some of my thoughts about where the most promising uh, progress might be made in the future. These are my disclosures. As you all know, we've had been in myeloma uh, a number of advances with the proteasome inhibitors, immunomodulatory drugs, HDAC inhibitor and antibodies. You've just heard nicely about new triplets, which are now used routinely, both for newly diagnosed and relapsed disease. In fact, we now have DARA, for example, or elituzumab being evaluated uh, as part of quadruplet therapies for non-transplant candidates and with Jesus and Maria V, uh, we have quadruplets incorporating DARA initially for the non-transplant candidates. I do think, though, in order to make a big difference, we're going to have to get to MRD with novel targeted therapies and do something to restore the immune system in patients. Before I talk about the new things, you know that when patients relapse nowadays, we think about patient-related factors and disease-related factors. Age, for example, cardiac dysfunction, and perhaps avoiding carfilzomib in that setting, proteasome inhibitors for renal dysfunction, avoiding drugs that are, cause neuropathy, especially in those patients who already have it, and if there's a venous thromboembolic risk, avoiding the immunomodulatory drugs. There are also disease-related factors and in fact, um, if you think about the patient who presents to you with relapsed myeloma, you can look at what they, for example, have had previously in addition to the clinical factors. So here we have drugs that are usually in triplet that are active in patients whose myeloma is refractory to lenalidomide and bortezomib, don't cause neuropathy, cause deep responses and are well tolerated. We have those that are active in bortezomib refractory and lenalidomide refractory, and importantly, we have drugs, carfilzomib, pomalidomide, exazomib, daratumumab, and elituzumab, all of which can achieve responses, usually in combination, even in 17P deletion. And these responses can be very long, as you know, KRD, Kyprolis, Lendex, at four years compared to Lendex, confers a survival advantage of almost a year. Elituzumab at four years confers a survival advantage compared to Lendex. And then daratumumab, which you've heard about lots at this meeting, combined with either proteasome inhibitor or Lendex in this slide, can achieve MRD negative responses that are durable. That's where we are now. Where are we going? I want to just pick out proteasome inhibitors, IMIDs, immunology, genomics, and epigenomics. Just quick examples of these areas where I think we can make some progress. So firstly, we have together targeted the proteasome with bortezomib, exazomib, carfilzomib successfully, but we and others are targeting upstream of the proteasome in what's called the ubiquitin receptor. It turns out the ubiquitinated protein binds to this receptor and it's delivered to the cap of the proteasome. We have a drug that inhibits this ubiquitin receptor and it blocks prote protein degradation, so it causes a massive accumulation of protein. It doesn't block the proteasome because it's upstream. And here are five of my patients whose myeloma is bortezomib resistant. It can achieve in a dose-dependent way responses, so it apparently by itself or together with proteasome inhibitors may be able to overcome proteasome inhibitor resistance, and it's going into clinical trial within about a year. In terms of the IMIDs, you know that they work by binding the cerebellum complex, and they trigger the degradation downstream of Icaros 1 and 3 with downstream hallmark abnormalities in myeloma. Well, there's a class of drugs now based on the IMIDs called the degronimids that bind to cerebellum, but they bind selectively to substrate, so you can degrade the substrate you want. In myeloma, we're interested in inhibiting perhaps MEK or ERK, and with this degronimate, we'll not only degrade that substrate, but it also retains the ability to degrade Icarus 1 and 3. Now, in your patients who become IMID resistant, or their myeloma does, one way to do that is by down-regulating cerebellum. So the question is, can we restore cerebellum levels? And it turns out in this uh, CRISPR-Cas9 knockout screen, we identify the signalosomes as those that actually down-regulate uh, cerebellum. So now we have strategies to try to develop drugs that can upregulate the signalosome and in so doing restore cerebellum and sensitivity to the IMIDs. 
We've also said, well, is there another pathway when Cerebron is not working anymore, triggered by imids, and there is, there's another pathway here, uh, which is in fact the TP53 uh, related kinase. It's a separate pathway, and we and others are trying to target it now in order to see if we can get imid activity when Cerebron is no longer present, or to add to Cerebron in terms of imid activity. Now, what about the antibodies? You've heard an awful lot about antibodies here at this meeting, but there are some new ones coming. Isotuximab is a CD38 antibody, which has the immune effects that daratumumab has here on the right, but it also has direct cytotoxicity in a unique mechanism that daratumumab does not have that involves um, direct uh, lysosome uh, agrosomal degradation. And you all know that this particular CD38 antibody has gone forward, not by itself, but together with pomalidomide dexamethasone, 60% responses uh, in uh, early clinical phase trials and a phase three trial of isotuximab with or without, I'm uh, sorry, POMDEX with or without isotuximab is now finished for new drug registration. You also have heard at this meeting that BCMA is probably the best target in myeloma because it's selective to normal plasma cells in myeloma. And it turns out that in your patient's bone marrow plasma, April is the most predominant ligand there. And April signals through BCMA for drug resistance, growth, and survival. So we and others have explored targeting April in terms of what it might do. In the bone marrow, osteoclasts and macrophages make April. April binds to the BCMA on your myeloma cell, conferring growth and drug resistance. Even worse, it upregulates PDL1, so it confers immune resistance. Conversely, if you use a humanized antibody to 2 April, you could avoid these direct effects of growth and survival, but you could also abrogate PDL1 upregulation and confer immune sensitivity, and this antibody is going into clinical trials next year. Another way of targeting BCMA is not only, uh, as we just said, but with an immunotoxin, and I think you're familiar with this. This immunotoxin targets BCMA and has this immune activity as expected, but it delivers an orostatin immunotoxin to the myeloma cell, which is internalized and kills it. At the American Society of Hematology last December, this was presented in oral form, and this immunotoxin actually achieved a response rate of 60% lasting eight months, and it's now on a rapid track towards uh, regulatory approval. I think one of the most exciting uh, realms is the BCMA bispecific T cell engagers. Not unlike what you have already in leukemia and lymphoma, we really want this in myeloma, except this time it's BCMA binding to the myeloma cell on the one hand and binding to the T cell on the other and having a localized immune reaction, hopefully in so doing having a more potent selective reaction where you want it and having a more favorable therapeutic index. Many are now in the clinic and early data is promising. You heard a beautiful talk, I'm sure, from Adam Cohen about CAR T cells earlier today. Our center is part of several trials. One of them is the Bluebird trial, which you know is leukophoresis, infecting the T cells with a lentivirus. 4BB1 is the co-stimulatory molecule. While the cells are being expanded, the patient is treated with fludarabine and cytoxan. The cells are reinfused, and then we watch for responses thereafter. And presented at the European Hematology Association most re recently is the result that was seen. Namely, if you infuse more than 150 million cells, you in fact have very exciting results, deep responses. In that setting, all the patients of 16 actually achieved MRD negativity. Their PFS, as of now anyway, is 17.7 months. But what I wanted to talk about is the future here. What, how can we make CAR T cells in this approach, adoptive immunotherapy, better? So I think we can use novel constructs that really combine or target more than one antigen. We can use combination strategies to enrich for a central memory, early lineage T cells. We can combine different kinds of transfected cells, T4 and T8. 
We can try to make universal CAR T cells. We can use peptides to stimulate the patient's own T cells to react against their myeloma. And we're going to do all of these in combinations. So let me just show you very quickly what I'm talking about. I really like this concept that came from uh, the West Coast. It's called Synodge, but the idea is that you have a CAR T cell that binds to one antigen, and so then the CAR is transcribed. But it has to bind to a second antigen on the myeloma cell in order for the CAR to be activated. So this is a combination approach at the level of the target. What about trying to enrich for uh, early memory T cells, and this is a combination approach, if you will, during expansion. In the BB2121 uh, next generation trial, they will be using the same vector, but using at the time of expansion a PI3 kinase inhibitor, which will be and has been shown in preclinical studies to select for and favor the development of early lineage memory cells. In terms of combination approaches of cells, the Juno uh, protocols are examining 50-50 CD4 to CD8 ratio uh, CAR T cells. Most of the T cells to date that have been reported have all been CD8 CTLs. I like the concept of a universal CAR T cell very much, where you could take off the shelf a normal donor T cell, edit out by CRISPR the ability of that cell to recognize the patient. And in this example, edit out CD52 from those CAR T cells as well. So the T cells are given to an unrelated patient. They don't recognize the patient as foreign. If the patient recognizes the CAR T cells as foreign, then you can give CAMPATH, which targets CD52, selectively killing the host rejecting cells without affecting the CAR T cells. And so this is a combination approach of CAR T cells and CAMPATH monoclonal antibody. There are many other uh, different strategies now to try to examine the normal donor uh, CAR T cell product. We, as many of you may know, are interested in vaccination, and we've been va vaccinating with peptide vaccines patients with smoldering myeloma, showing in so doing that you can get a tetramer positive type 1 cytokine tumor myeloma selective responses autologous responses in patients against their own cancer, and you can upregulate these with lenalidomide or an HDAC inhibitor. The reason I show it for you here today is we have a protocol that is going to be starting hopefully within the next six months to year at our institution. We have a new peptide. This is not published. It's a BCMA peptide, a heteroclitic peptide. And in two different donors shown here, you can induce an immune response that is BCMA selective and it's a memory T cell response. So the protocol is going to go like this. We're going to take patients with myeloma, vaccinate them with this peptide, harvest their memory CTLs that are directed against BCMA, and expand them ex vivo, just as you would a CAR T cell. Then those cells can be reinfused as therapy. There should not be any cytokine release syndrome, et cetera, because these are their own autologous, uh, not artificially activated T cells. And then after the therapy, if we need to, we can vaccinate the patient at intervals, say six months or a year, in order to have persistence of these memory cells against their own myeloma. We're very excited about this concept. I want to finish up with just a couple of comments, uh, having gone over these various topics about genomic therapy or precision medicine in myeloma. I'm sure you've heard already today about venetoclax. You know it from your lymphoma and CLL uh, treatments. But in patients with 1114 translocation, particularly those that overexpress BCL2 gene and protein, there is strong single agent activity of about 40%. But Shaji Kumar, Philippe Moreau, and others have shown if you combine it with bortezomib, the response rate can approach 90%. So we're excited that this oral well-tolerated uh, inhibitor of BCL2 will likely be soon approved in multiple myeloma as well. Now this is a slide I've borrowed from Faith Davies at the University of Arkansas, but what she shows is that this is the frequency with which genes are mutated in myeloma. The signs of the letters are the frequency of mutation. So the RAS-RAPMAP kinase pathway is most commonly mutated here. 
And we and others have tried to use inhibitors of BRAF, MEK, ERK alone or together, and there have been transient responses reported. Soon beginning is what's called the My Drug Trial. I think it's going to be the first precision medicine trial in myeloma. You see, we've had such success. If we're going to treat relapse myeloma, we really need to treat with a backbone combination that's active. So we chose exazomib and pomalidomide, to which will be added a novel targeted agent predicated upon the profile of the patient. So it might be that backbone with an ERK inhibitor, or an IDH inhibitor, or venetoclax, or et cetera, et cetera. This clinical trial will be starting uh, imminently. It's been a couple of years in the making, uh, getting through the FDA, et cetera. And finishing up, that's genetics with venetoclax and the my drug. What about epigenetics? Well, epigenetics has basically demethylation <laughs> and methylation. And so, in our opinion, the, one of the best demethylases in myeloma is KDM3A. And we and others are excited about it because if you inhibit KDM3A, you restore methylation or suppress the transcription of certain genes that are shown here. Among them is IRF4, which is a very important hallmark abnormality in myeloma. So KDM3 inhibitors are probably going to be the first demethylases inhibited in myeloma. And finally, what about methyl transferases, which are the other side of it? Uh, this is. Um, in myeloma, our favorite is protein arginine methylase transphase 5. And we like it because there's an oral inhibitor of this particular PRMT5. The oral inhibitor is selective, potent, well tolerated in animal models, and it shows efficacy in other tumors. Our recent work in myeloma is shown here. It, we've shown that this particular PRMT5 methyltransferase is highly expressed in myeloma and it confers with a poor outcome. In fact, it, um, we can show that it's very functional in myeloma, that if you silence it either genetically or with this drug, you can inhibit myeloma cell growth. We think it's working by NF-kappa B signaling. That's work in progress. But what's neat is in our oral animal mo in our animal models, the oral inhibitor is extremely well uh, tolerated and very selectively active. So we're excited that these preclinical studies, and we have now interest, that this may actually translate from the bench to the bedside with one of the first epigenetic methyltransferase targeted therapies. So what I've tried to do very quickly is to tell you that in fact. I think we have made great progress with combination therapies in the past, and we're going to make some more in the future with entirely new classes of agents. My prediction is we're going to together use combination therapies. They're going to be predicated and defined by preclinical studies. They will be used to treat particular subsets of patients. They will actually be defined Who's, who will be defined by profiling, and the studies will be informed by biomarkers. I already mentioned to you this targeted therapy is wonderful to get to MRD negativity potentially, but I think we need more. We need some mu um, immune uh, strategies, and I mentioned that the universal CAR T cells, or perhaps these peptide stimulated T cells, to me, are among the more attractive for restoring in your patient a memory immune response against their myeloma. So at the bottom, I think if we're really going to make a difference in terms of long-term disease-free survival, we really need to get to MRD negativity, and we need this immune response. So you're going to see combinations, not just of targeted, but also of targeted and immune therapies. And this is my uh, United Nations Against Myeloma that many of you know. Uh, these are the uh, laboratory people on the right. Lebr clinic on the left, and it goes back and forth. And you know, all of the progress in myeloma and many other cancers is because we have welcomed people from around the world who have made our science and clinical medicine so strong. Thanks.